Hey everyone, today's video is going to be about how to print your mix instead of bouncing your mix. First thing you're going to do is you're going to create a stereo track. So I, here's my stereo track and then I'm going to label it and I'm going to call it print. And I put this at the end of my mix. So this is now my print track. So I'm going to print my mix when I'm ready here. I don't put in any plugins or nothing. Nothing goes into my print track. This is only f so I can print. All right. Once I created that, then I'm going to now create my two bus track. So I'm going to create a master fader. And I like to rename mine's mix. It's up to you. You can name it whatever you want. I like to name it mix. Because it helps me with my routing. All right. So now, normally, all of these tracks right, goes through the main two bus in Pro Tools. But we want to print. So here is where the in, input and output come into play. Okay. The output should be your audio interface, your, your audio interface output, whatever you use to monitor your mix. That stays the same. You don't change that at all. However, you will change the input, but your input is going to be a bus. So I'm going to click here. I'm going to go to my bus and I, I can pick any bus. I like to use the first one. And then I like to name this. And I'm going to rename this mix. All right. So my input is a bus. My output is your your out your regular audio interface. Now my mix, my master bus where everything routes to. Now I need to change this. This is no longer going to be an out to your monitoring system. This is now going to be the bus that I created. So now all of this needs to be routed to this master bus. So I'm going to select everything. I'm going to hold on option shift. I'm going to click here, my out, go to bus, mix. And now all the tracks are going here. But if I press play, the mix is playing, but nothing, you can't hear anything. Why? Because right here, the output is going into this track and then this track is going to your out. But it's not going to work like this, at least not in Pro Tools. Remember, this is a Pro Tools specific tutorial on how to print. All right. So we need to do a few other things. And this is crucial. And that is over here in your input mon monitoring. So if I click input monitoring and then I press play, now my mix is routed to here. And now I'll be able to hear the mix. In other words, this is acting as a channel or a track that you use to record. So let's say you're recording vocals, right? You will create a track and you will either record, enable, or if you just want to listen to it, you will use input monitoring. The same concept is goes here because we are going to actually use this track to record but not yet so now if i press play you should be able to hear the mix by the way this mix it, it, it's not mix i just loaded it up and so there's nothing here this is just how it was tracked all right so we're not done yet. There's one last thing we need to do, and that is solo safe. We need to solo safe this track. Why? Because if you're mixing and then you click solo, now you solo track whatever track you decided to solo, but now you won't be able to monitor this because this is not in safe mode. So by creating safe mode, command click, and it turns into like this little ghost. Now, it's in now it's you can 
solo things and you'll still be able to track it. So for example, let's say I go to the first verse, right? And I'm going to hit play. It's going to play the song and I'm going to start soloing some tracks and then you should be able to monitor those tracks. I search for the remedy to take down my enemies while they above this mountain. All right, so you see now you can monitor everything. So now your routing is done. Now, if you want to create auxiliary tracks and route like let's say the drums to auxiliary however you do it that's fine that that doesn't as long as whatever auxiliary you create make sure that one goes to the mix and not the out for example let me show you real quick let's say that here are my guitars right these are all my guitar tracks and let's say that you want to route your guitar tracks to auxiliary like a guitarist auxiliary track right all right so let's do that let me create an auxiliary guitar track Let's call this guitars, and I want to route everything to this, right? So my input, I will create a bus, uh, three and four. So all of this is going to go to three and four now. All right, so all of my guitar tracks are going to this auxiliary track. However, the out is to your audio interface. You don't want that. You want this to go to your two bus. So you just got to make sure that this you change to your mix. And now if I play. I search for the remedy to take down my enemies while they fight each Okay, see, and if I mute it, you won't hear it. So that is how you route that. I'm going to leave it like this for now. Okay, so now that everything is routed, now how do you print? Right, normally if you were to bounce this, the way I would do it, I would select a, a track from beginning to end, right? Then I would hit Command, um, Option, Command B, and then I would bounce it, right? But no, I don't want to do that. I want to print it. So how would I print it? I still select it. However, now what I do is I go to Record Enable, and then I start recording. So Command Spacebar. So now here is my print. And the great thing about this is that now I can use this and send it off to the client or I can use it as different versions. So for example, let's say I do some mixing moves. Let's say that the vocals were, were too low in the mix, right? So I'm going to now bump up the vocals. It's going to be really loud. Okay? This is just a, a, an example. And let's say that now I'm playing, let's go to uh, verse two, right? For example. And now I'm playing the the new mix, right? With vocals up. We're building an army. Okay, so you see how it's really loud. So now what I can do is I can compare to my previous mix. So if I get mix notes from a client, I will do some changes and then I will compare it to the previous mix that I sent. For example. We're building an army. We fight for the victims. Our causes are glory. You're standing here. So I'm using the previous print as or the previous mix that I sent out as a reference track. And this is a great way to work. This is a good workflow. Whereas if I bounced it, I won't have access to that. I will have to bring it in and maybe create another track. And But this way is better. So let, let's say that now I want to print the new track, right? So I go back to the beginning, right? Actually, I select everything. And then what I do is I just create a new track 
and I'll call it maybe print two. And now I print again, and then I'll have both, and so on and so forth. All right, simple. Now, last thing, how do I send this off to the, the client? Well, this print, right, it says it's, it's labeled print one, but let's say we, we want to send this off to the client, right? What I would do is I will right click, I will rename it. I will rename everything, name, clip, and this file. And I will name it my song um, pass one, right? And I will click OK. And then now I can send that song or that track to the client. And where is this song? Where, where can you find this, this track or this clip? Well, in your folder. The folder that where, where your, your, this song is, is located in your computer and it will be under audio files not bounce files but audio files that's where you will find this song now let's say that you don't want to send this as a WAV file you want to send this as an mp3 easy just find the song here right click it and then what you do is you export export clips as files and then now you can change it to an mp3 and then you export it Again, it's going to be saved in the audio file. And then if you leave it the way, it's going to give it the same file name. But then instead of being .wave, it'll be .mp3. And that's how you can tell the difference. Or if you want to choose a different folder, if you have a set of folders where you have just your mp3s, whatever, however, whatever your workflow is. But the bottom line is that you can send to your client an mp3 version of this print track. Let's say also that, for example, you had to do a quick change. Let's say you had to change something here, right? But you don't want to print the whole thing, right? Let's say that this, let's just say this bass pad right here was too loud. The client wants you to lower it, right? So let me just lower it for now. So now I have to print, but... I don't want to print the whole thing again. Well, I can just print from right there. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to hit uh, record. I'm going to print this section. All right, so there, I printed just that section. And then what I can do is I can select the whole thing, shift option three and consolidate. And then this section right here, I don't have to, you don't have to do any crossfades or, or nothing. You don't have to crossfade anything. It'll play seamlessly here. Here's where we did the edit. And you're going to hear that it just sounds like, like it's part of the song. And that's it. If you have any comments or any questions, if, if, if there was something that I did that was too fast or you didn't understand, please leave a comment below. I answer all comments, good and bad, and I've gotten some bad ones. And until next time, happy mixing.